Welcome to the time of relief, the time of revelation, the time of liberation, the time of empowerment, and the time of favor. My name is Salas Olufemi, and I'm your Bible teacher on this program. We are continuing our series on this message titled, God with us. In this fifth episode, we shall be looking at another doubt of the devil used against the children of God as was presented in the book of Prophet Isaiah chapter 36. Today in our study, we shall be looking at fallacy. Isaiah chapter 36 verse 10 And am I now come up without the Lord against this land to destroy it? The Lord said unto me, Go up against this land and destroy it. Fallacy is defined as a false idea people believe is true. Fallacy thrives on wrong belief. Fallacy is another potent strategy of the enemy against Christians. Rab Shake, the enemy spokesman, claimed in this passage that he was sent by the God of Israel, Jehovah, to come and destroy them. Wrong information breeds wrong belief, and wrong beliefs breed wrong confession. Wrong confession brings bondage. A child of God without the right understanding of God's dealings and his word is like a blind man riding on a bicycle. God's intent for his children is never evil. Jeremiah chapter 29 verse 11 For I know what I have planned for you, says the Lord. I have plans to prosper you, not to harm you. I have plans to give you a future filled with hope. What you read and how you read it matters. Luke chapter 10 verse 26 And what you hear also matters. Mark chapter 4, verse 24. The Jewish leaders, in bid to hide the embarrassment brought on them by Jesus' resurrection, paid the soldiers guarding his tomb to spread false information that Jesus' body was stolen by disciples. Matthew chapter 28, verses 11 to 15. Lies and falsehoods are weapons of war. There are several fallacies common among Christians. When we have dulled our spiritual sensitivity by sensuality, we embrace the belief that the age of miracles has passed. When our expectations are not forthcoming, we conclude that God is punishing us for our past sins. When we want to indulge in sin, we preach that God is too good to discipline his children. When things are going smoothly, we preach that in Christ Jesus, there is no stress. When we don't have answers to our predicaments, we generalize that the cause of all affliction is sin. When we want others to feel bad about their social status, we claim that poverty is a sin. And when we want to justify poverty, our dogma becomes poverty is righteousness. All these statements are different forms in which fallacy creeps into our belief system. The reason we are given the Bible, the Holy Spirit, and the gift of prophets was that we may know the mind of God per time. The book of Job is full of prevalent fallacies among believers. The first fallacy in the book of Job is that God is such a hard-hearted, stringent enforcer, ready to strike at the slightest provocation. Job and the people in his generation had a very distorted view of God. They believed that blasphemy attract instant death. Job chapter 2 verse 9 and Job chapter 1 verse 5. Job believed that God is an unsympathetic entity that give and take as he wishes. Job chapter 5 verse 21. The Lord gave and now he has taken away. May his name be blessed. Job believed that we should expect calamity from God at any moment. He may send one just to amuse himself. He is very unpredictable. Job chapter 2 verse 10. Job replied his wife, when God sends us something good, we welcome it. How can we complain when He sends us trouble? That's reading from Good News Bible. Job and his four friends were leading spiritual figures of their time, but their understanding of the personality of God was distorted. They were sincere but sincerely wrong. When calamity struck, Job's friend concluded, according to popular dogma, that Job has sinned. Fallacy, erroneous belief exposes us to demonic attack just as it exposed Job. Remember, 
God called the attention of the devil to Job. God wanted to correct these fallacies perpetrated by the leading examples of faith, Job and his four friends, and opened door for Job to enter into the realm of double blessing. The devil never knew God's intentions. At times, when we have been so wrongly worded, it takes a painful experience to turn our attention to what God has been shouting out that we couldn't hear. Job chapter 30, verses 25 to 26. Everything I fear and dread comes true. I have no peace, no rest, and my troubles never end. Bull work of fallacy prevents us from following God's thoughts. It robs us of divine blessings and exposes us to demonic attacks. Job was living in fear and dread of loving God that was proud of him. Though he was secured by God, Job chapter 1 verse 9, fallacy put fear and insecurity in the heart of Job. Wrong beliefs breed wrong confession. Wrong confession breeds fear, and fear brings bondage. If your believing is wrong, your revelations and visions will be wrong. So also your prophecy. Job and his friends were haunted by wrong dreams and visions based on wrong beliefs and confessions. Job chapter 4, verses 12 to 19. Reading from Living Bible Translation. This truth was given me in secret as though whisper in my ears. It came in a nighttime vision as others slept. Suddenly, fear gripped me. I trembled and I shook with terror. As a spirit passed before my face, my ears stood up on end. I felt the spirit's presence but couldn't see it standing there. Then out of the dreadful silence came this voice. Verse 17. Is mere man more just than God, more pure than his creator? If God cannot trust his own messengers, for even angels make mistakes, how much less men made of dust? The image of God drawn in this vision of Eliphaz, Job's friend, is not the same with the God that called Abraham his friend and was concerned of not hurting his feelings. Genesis chapter 18 verse 17. It is not the same as that of the God that was pleased with Enoch that took him to heaven without experiencing death. Lamentation chapter 30 verses 31 to 33. The Lord is merciful and will not reject us forever. He may bring us sorrow, but his love for us is sure and strong. He takes no pleasure in causing us grief or pain. As the prodigal son was not prevented by his father from leaving the home, knowing he may be injured, get lost, or die temporarily in the process, his love for us will not prevent him from allowing us to pass through some temporary painful experiences that can lead to our spiritual emancipation. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 6. Because the Lord corrects everyone he loves and punishes everyone he accepts as his child. How do we know if we are suffering from unilateral satanic attack as experienced by Ezekiah or if God permitted it to draw our attention as well with what happened to Job? That is why we have the Holy Spirit. When Apostle Paul experienced a thorn in the flesh, he asked and the Lord answered him. 2 Corinthians chapter 12, verses 7-9 to Job and the people of his generation were trapped in these fallacies because their spiritual understanding was based on second-hand knowledge. They were sincerely serving God in the best way they knew. They were blessed thus far but prevented from spiritual maturity because their spiritual understanding was wrongly rooted. Job admitted in Job chapter 42, verse 5, in the past, I knew only what others have told me, but now I have seen you with my own eyes. The only safeguard against fallacy is exposition to the word unmingled with human ideas and philosophies. Study under spirit inspired teacher and developing a flexible hearing ear. Ezekiel did not swallow the lies of his enemies. He instead went to present his case to God personally in prayer and asked his spiritual mentor, Prophet Isaiah, to agree with him in prayer. If you are blessed by this teaching, join me on the next episode as we look into another doubt of the enemy on this series of teachings. Follow me on Google Plus and subscribe to my YouTube channel, Time of Relief. Like my Facebook page, 
time of relief. WhatsApp and calling number 234 99 86 3872. Add me as friend on Facebook, Reverend Silas.